Good evening, everybody out there in YouTube land. How is everybody? All well, I hope. Hope you've all had a, a nice day. Um, I know Dale probably hasn't. Uh, but apart from that, I hope everybody else had a nice day. Um, I've got Andy in with us tonight. Um, he's been my sideman tonight. Uh, so hopefully, don't all speak at once in the chat. <laughs> Give Andy a chance to to see what's going on. Uh, I've just had myself back. Um, and uh, if you do have any questions, um, please put question in front. I'm just going to change the camera. Hang on. That's my bad. Right. This is what we've got on tonight. It's a piece of burr ash. I've started turning it this afternoon. I've taken the majority of the bark off using my Arbitec blade in my uh, angle grinder. It's still quite out of balance. It's, yeah, it is. You can see it coming around. Yep, there it goes. It's still quite out of balance. At the moment, it's about 16 inches across, just under 16 inches across, by about five deep. By the time we're finished tonight, it'll end up being about 14 inches um, in diameter by four, four and a half, five inches deep. That's what we're going to be, be looking for tonight. Uh, again, it would be a fairly straightforward shaped bowl. I'm going to start off turning at, where am I at? That's at about 370. So I'm going to start turning, and um, Andy can start letting me know who's in. Cool. Evening all. Um, before I start, can I just say, if you've got a question for Dale, please... Question. Um, um, Tommy Guns in the chat. Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry, Jennifer. Um, uh, Richard Phelan, uh, blah, 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 blah. Andrew from Wivy Woodshed, I think. SK Steve, uh, Mark the Gentleman Woodshed. Linda O'Reilly, Jack Jim, Jim, no, sorry. Jack, that's yeah. Jack. Yeah, 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 Jack, I got that bit right. All right. <laughs> it was the surname. Uh, uh, in the Uh, Ron Kisto, Kisco, Two Meadows Designs. Oh, thank you. One's in. Steve Ash. Stand by your beds. The boss is in. Uh, Martin Woody's Creations, Chris Cox, blimey, this is like forever. Um, Dory Sixty. Oh, la, la, la. I'm not even at the bottom of the list yet. <laughs> Uh, John Scarborough, 
Uh, Hobby Turner, Adrian, hi. Henry Morgan. Dale says he wants to shout out to watch you on his tablet and chatting on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> Think there's a bottom of the bit. There's going to be quite a lot of bar conclusions left on this. Cool. Yes, size that. Adam's touching. Oh, JP backstage. Oh. The wing man's got a Hello. How you doing? Everyone good? Good, good, good. Hello, Debbie. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hello, Jennifer. Hello, everybody else. Hello, everybody else. You got sixty people, sixty-four in at the moment, Wayne. Thanks so for being along, guys. That's uh, not bad going for seven minutes long. Pink from Twisted Trees is in. Oh, yeah. Getting there, getting there. I'm just going to give this. That's nice. Go quick shot. Out of curiosity, Wayne, if someone was to buy that piece of burr from a shop, how much would it cost them? I don't know how much it would cost from a shop. It cost me um, or from a mill or whatever. Right, I paid I paid thirty quid for it. That's what I paid for it. Bargain. Uh, something this sort of size. I think you'd probably. I don't know, maybe 60, 65, something this size. It was over 16 inches across, and it was about six inches deep. You've got two super chats in the chat. You've got oh, thank you, guys. And you've got a maple tree super chat. Yeah, I, I, gave you, I gave you a super chat because I know you don't care about them. <laughs> too, too 
pig for my life, Adrian says. that bell that bell was 16 inches 15 inches you said when yeah, was it? It was, when it started it was just over 16 and it was about six inches deep yeah Oof. Specifically, sort of slightly wear my mask. I forgot to put my bloody mask on. Tony Rice is in the chat. Hey, Dolly. Sounds like a pneumatic drill. Yeah, I'm hitting quite a lot of air at the moment. All this excess here, I'm not going to shoot this into the bowl, I'm just going to get this taken off so I can get some semblance of it being around. So I'll just nibble the way it is quite gently. A message to the group on whom's life. We'd last speak to him later. Thank <laughs> you. 
Looking cool, man. Like it. Well, yeah, cool. very nice, mate. Anything like very this. nice. So, whenever you're doing anything, really, you're as well staying away from the ends of the tool rest because um, they can snap with too much pressure on them, but they can also twist as well. And it doesn't really matter how tight you've got them tightened down, they can still twist. I've got a solid steel uh, tool rest, and I've bent that one before. And I had, uh, I had one basically made out of uh, paper mache. Like that. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was like it was paper mache. It's the one that came with the lathe from uh, Axminster. Oh, I don't know what. Okay. Just like. Yeah, yeah. Cut, cast, cast paper mache. Oh, yeah. Oh, that might be. Um... Uh, question for you, Wayne. Yeah. Are you going to use a bowl saver? Uh, that comes from Tommy Dunn. Um, I did actually think about um, coring this one, Tommy. Um, but. The, I've got the McNaughton bowl saver or Cora, whichever you want to call it. And I've, a, I've actually just got it set up to use on the VB. And to tell you the truth, if I want to do a live on the v, on the VB, it takes us most of the day to swap all the cameras around and the monitor and the computer and everything. And uh, Jane had me working in the garden this morning, so by the time this afternoon came, I just couldn't be bothered. So in answer to your question, no. <laughs> Adrian, are you, are you after some burrs? Are you like sort of six inch burrs? Just out of curiosity. Was that to me, Andy? No, it was um, Adrian. He, oh, he right. was saying about the cut. I wondered if he was after some burrs. <laughs> Andy, did you see the fascinating review I left for you on Etsy today? Yeah, uh, no. I saw it ping up on my phone, but I hadn't had a chance because uh, <laughs> I've been non stop. How do I got this one from, this bird from? Because got an absolutely beautiful piece of um, burr elm, which stands about four foot tall. It's well over two foot around, um, but he's wanting 400 quid for it. That's a beautiful bit of uh, wood that is. I mark. Who's that? This is going to use my small tool gun. Final cut. So I'll bring the tool rest back now and I'll see if I can do a final cut in the water. Although I have got a bit of space around the, the side here. Right. 
Excuse me. Not Corona. Some of you will be glad to know. I've got a couple of small pieces of red Marley burr, and I've still got some of that chestnut that you gave me, Andy. Yeah, I've got some coarse chestnut there if anyone's interested. Quite a bit. I'm half tempted to buy a uh, get my pressure pot uh, set up and, and get a and get a steer uh, and start making some steers. And start throwing them down at the gallery down at, in town. Start doing them with like a seaside theme. Yeah. Wouldn't it be better casting shells then? Well, that's what that's what I mean. People keep saying to me, like, take your scroll saw stuff down there. And I'm like, dude, I said, that's the, the all my scroll saws are far too big. This shop, you can literally you couldn't fit two people side by side no. walking in there. That's how thin this this shop is. And it's like, if I put start taking scroll saw stuff down, there wouldn't be nothing else for people, other people's stuff, mm. you know, like to, if you wanted to display it. So, I want to take some little small stuff down there. So yeah, so if I start doing some like series and eggs and things like that, with like a, a beach theme or seaside theme or something like that, mm. you know. If I, if I start getting stuff off the beaches and things like that, you know, like, I don't know, uh, bottles, cans, needles, that sort of stuff. <laughs> A proper beach scene, then. A proper beach scene, yeah. <laughs> According to the news, um, you'd be finding mainly... Um, disposable masks and gloves and that. That's not funny, by the way. That's that's an actual thing. Yeah. Well, that's the bottom, I, I, could open, I could open a maker shop. That'd be a good idea. Yeah. As as zombies in. How's that? There's, there's, pl there's plenty of uh, there's plenty of decrap uh, decrapid decrepit buildings. That are uh, going cheap down where we are, like shop fronts. No, well, get yourself. A... No, in in Margate, where it's like it used to be the highlight. Margate back in the eighties and nineties, go oh, jolly hey. boys out and in only fools and horses. I used to know somebody who came from Margate, and he was in the ring. Yeah, Margate Bridge. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. Then it just went to uh, Angus. Then it just fell on the glass and no one, no one came down there again. Yeah, 
mean, I don't know what went on, but I don't know. Uh, it, it started coming back up again, and they opened up Dreamland again, and then someone decided they wanted to set fire to Dreamland, and yeah. And uh, uh, the Dreamland, the scenic railway was a, a listed building, so now they then they rebuilt that ride because it, the ride was all made out of wood. So. But yeah, that's all the open again. Okay, so I don't know. It's not a bad idea, though. No, it's not a bad idea. I'll have to have a look into that. I reckon have your own maker gallery. I'd have to have a look into that. Other people's no, no, that's really not a bad idea. Because we've also got the Turner Contemporary down where we are as well. And there you go. The art, the art gallery. And the Turner Contemporary is on the ten pound note, isn't it? Mm. Is it on a ten pound note or a twenty pound note? It's on one of them. I can't remember the last time I saw one of them notes. Yeah, yeah me either. <laughs> I never used my card. You still hear me okay, guys? Yes, mate, yeah. yeah, yeah. Have, you, have you not got a, an arts and crafts collective down your way, do you think? Uh, the, yes, I think there is. I think there's one in Ramsgate. But that's where I've got a lot of my stuff. In, yeah, in, I, th I think there's one in Ra Actually, I think there's one in Margate as well. Yeah, I think there's a couple of them, mate. To be honest with you, it's quite an arty kind of kind of place down where I live. Yeah. That's a good question, Steve. How old is the bear, Wayne? Would it have any bugs? And that's from Steve. Would it have any bugs? I don't think it's got any bugs, otherwise I wouldn't notice them. There's no bug holes. All of, all of this is uh, all bark. So there's no bug holes there. As to how old it is, it's not long being cut down. I can tell by feeling that it is very, very cold. Um, it has sanded oak here, so it's been it's been cut down a wee while, but it hasn't been cut down that long. Hmm, so puts his hand on it, and he knows all of that sort. So going to start calling him Mystic Wayne. <laughs> Can't you tell that, JP? Sorry. I well, I suppose maybe it's different with carving because it's more. I've got my hands on the peat. I can. When it, I've now worked. Yeah, you, you can you can feel that feel the moisture and the, the, how cold it is. Yeah, you can almost feel you can almost feel it like a dry piece of wood. Yeah, it's just like a body. The colder it is, the longer it's been dead. Yeah, right. Unless they're in a fire. Is Glenn still on? Glenn, I'm not using your grip. I, I think Glenn's just gone. So you're lucky he, he's just gone. Um, um, mind you, with the inclusions that it, that's in here, he would probably. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell him. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell him though. So you consider yourself sacked. Uh, <laughs> I just ordered a new t I just, GP. I just ordered a new T-shirt today. Oh yeah, go on. It, um, it is. Excuse me, I've got some wood turning to do. And the skew, <laughs> skews is spelled S K E W S, like the skew chisel. Oh dear. <laughs> uh, we'll have to come up with we'll have to come up with some Wayne the Woodturner T-shirts. You can get that one off Amazon, by the way. The skews me one. Um, Julian Clifford's in the chat. Uh, oh yeah. Rubber Dub is in the chat. 
Ellie Two Meadows Designs is also in the chat. I think that's Ellen. And I think uh, there was a chap that we missed um, because it was never <laughs> I've like gone too far. Dave the Wood Barber's in. Hey, Dave. Good to see you, me old friend. Hello, Dave. Um, oh, no, I think I missed somebody. I apologise if I missed. Uh, oh, DIY. Yeah, Dark Dark Man! I don't know if I said Mick Do's actually. Hey Mick. Right, I think I'll do for that. And that's just um drop the top. It's not drop the top, it isn't called drop the top. That's what I did. Chestnut lemon oil, I'll put on there. Uh Dale, Dale said he's got a head off, he's got to go and get uh have a sponge bath by some nurses. Well he said actually said he's got to entertain them, but I'm just changing it. Yeah. Uh, Robert uh, has a question. How long does the lemon oil take to cure? Um, you can, uh, around about 24 hours. Hang on, hang on. Somebody asked this the other week. All right. After preparing the tin with the silky smooth finish, silky smooth finish, there you go. Um, apply the lemon oil liberally with a brush or cloth, leave it to soak in for 15 minutes, wipe off the excess with a clean dry cloth, allow a further 24 hours for the lemon oil to dry thoroughly. There you go, 24 hours. Uh, there was another one that's just gone past, where is it? Uh, oh yeah, Martin at Woody's Creation says, Wayne, please don't say you're colouring this one. Oh, no, I've already put oil on it. <laughs> Mind you, it did cross my mind. <laughs> no, just because there's oil on it, don't mean to say you can't burn it. And that's yeah, how the oil will help. The oil will help. I could actually just leave it 24 hours and then uh, colour it. But no, no, I'll leave it. Dark says, uh, Wayne, it looks like it's going to be beautiful. Yes, please don't colour it. Okay, uh, I'm not then. Mike says, Oh, nearly forgot my thumbs up. Um, uh, Jacques says, Not on top of the oil. I assume he's referring to the colouring. Right, drill, 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 screwdriver. Let's see how many of these screws I can snap. Oh no. I didn't actually know if I was going to get a life tonight. My internet has been absolutely awful all day. Uh, that says what's that ring called? What does that say? What's that ring called? Faceplate. It's, uh, it's a faceplate ring, Zed. So basically what you do is you screw on the faceplate ring. It's got a dovetail in there, which fits into the expansion mode of your chuck jaws. Now, I am going to have to be careful. Um, I was using a very small drill. I think it was a two millimeter drill uh, to drill pilot holes for the screws. 
and it snapped. So at some point, I'm going to hit a drill with the gouge. Um, David McLaren in the chat. Hey, David. The thing is, I don't know which hole it was. <laughs> so this should be fun. Indeed. So I've, I've been I spent most a lot of the day today watching a lot of uh, video turning videos. So I'm going to try and do my very first turning with no lessons tomorrow. What using the gouges? Yeah. So that should be a giggle. Obviously, obviously, it'll be on camera. Oh, Glenn's just putting something in the group chat about me using chestnut products. Yeah. That's because yes. I put in there that you didn't use the grip. Yeah, I know. He wouldn't have used your grip on this. That's actually slightly what <laughs> that is. <laughs> we're, we're picking on you, Wayne. Oh, yeah. Like our chair. That's better. Take another prop in there. The thing is, I don't remember which hole the drill snapped off in. I thought he was measuring the depth there, Wayne. I thought was like, oh. mate, you need to hollow it out a bit more than that, mate. Yeah, today I'm making uh, half a half very, a very shallow bowl. <laughs> a very, very shallow bowl. <laughs> there you go. Just, just, just poke a few holes in it. And you go right there. You go. That's just happen. That's just hollow. It's definitely one of those, uh, it doesn't rock over screw holder things. So you screw in your screws so you can't lose them. Ah, there it is. Found it. What is it? It's a drill. It's a two millimeter drill. Ah. Yeah, when, ah. I, when I was drilling the pilot holes, the drill All snapped right. off. Ah, gotcha. Well, that's what some of it. There might still be some left in there, but we'll get to that. Hey, a bigger drill bit and draw around. Found it. I could do. That's what I did the last time. There's a particularly hard piece of wood here uh, that isn't actually clean very nicely. Of course, you're very, uh, fast. Uh, to be cool to hear Wayne. 
Okay, yeah, I'm just I'm scrolling I'm I'm scrolling back. Oh cool, okay. Uh right, uh this is from uh Steve Templeboy, uh Wayne. Uh can you explain exactly what a burr is, Wayne? I was corrected by a guy a while ago because I originally thought uh it was a build up of scarring from, from a damage. Right, the way I look at burrs, no, this isn't anywhere near definitive and it's probably not true either. But I look at burrs as being well you know that they're tree um camera. Tree green that go straight up and down. Um so you've got all the cells and everything within the within the green going straight up and down. And then sometimes I think just like humans, when humans get cancer, these the cancerous cells just go absolutely mental and go everywhere. And that's how I look upon a burr. Instead of the, the grain growing straight, the, the grain just goes everywhere. It might be because of damage. It might be because of something that's actually got inside the wood and then the wood started growing around it, something like that. Um, but it's just that the grain going everywhere instead of going straight. That's, that's the way I look on a, on a burr, and that's the easiest way I find to explain it. I'll see. Oh, I'm having to give this a sharpen because I hit that flaming grill. I want to know why Wayne wants to get that drill bit out anyway. Is he that tight? Hey, is it what? I said, why do you want to get that drill bit out for you? Really that tight? <laughs> so it's snapped in three bits now. The price of scrap metal. The price of scrap metal's gone up. So you can get another bottle of wine. <laughs> the inside of this is a hell of a lot harder to turn than the outside. Yes, he said it was a noise that you make when you get cold. Creations give you a super chat, way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Towards another drill bit. <laughs> it's, I pinched it off, do you know? Anyway, it was one of my jewelry uh, drill bits. <laughs> I ain't gonna worry about that. You just take get all three bits and just weld them back together again.
The guy said and insisted, oh, nice one, Steve, uh, way more than he needed to, said a part of the tree's growth and the area where the bark lets more moisture in, causing it to kind of mutate. Okay. So, yeah, a bit like a cancerous growth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From what I'm gathering, I don't think anyone really knows unless you're a... No. I'll Google it later, so I'll go and answer the next one. Other than obviously, yeah, yeah um, a bit earlier. Uh Mark, the gentleman would turn to put an interesting point out. Uh, Tim Yoda did a video not so long ago about birds and tree parts and things like that. as well Certainly yeah the, the colors in the ones that you uh that i've got a few andy they were, they're unbelievable the amount of different colors in it mm, it's crazy isn't it yeah it's just insane oh well, yeah i mean just the, the colors in the wood in general but it hits the, the pearl, it's just wow I think a picture of some of the pieces that I cut. In fact, I might post them up on Instagram. Actually. Some of the blanks. Yeah. Because it's like. Oh. Yeah, definitely. People want people like seeing them sort of pictures. Yeah. Question. I googly googled it and got four different answers. So if she doesn't know. Ah. See, there we go. I think it might be one of those things. That I saw the pictures actually, Richard, of the tree that you took down. That was just burnt all the way up. I can't remember if I told you guys. I uh, I had to go up to Wix's not so long ago, and we drove past uh, my old school. And that right outside my, my old school, outside the main entrance, there's a uh, there's a tree there, and it's covered from top to bottom in burl or burr. And we're like, oh my god, I'd love to just get a chainsaw to that tree right now. <laughs> so it's just, it's not, it's not, there's like, there's loads and loads of trees, like single trees all the way down the road, but there's just this one tree on it standing there on its own. And it's just, it, you'd think it was dead the way it looks. But I mean, from now being a wood turner or a woodworker, whatever you want to call me, a wood butcher, yeah. then you, you know that that ain't dead. There's, they're birds, do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
I mean, the thing must have been four or five hundred years old. The thing was massive. Yeah. Probably. Right. I just had to have another quick shot in there. I've got the last of the drill out, so yeah. I can start carrying on now. What, what speed are you running at, Wayne? Hey, speed. What about, speed are you running at? About 550. The centre of the LE2 Meadows, and I like the term wood butcher. I might have to pinch that. Go on, all yours. Um, this is you sure you it's going to take in Ellie. You can see for the, the difference in colour here between the light and the dark. This is predominantly the, the hardwood, the brown wood is the hardwood, and it's um very, very hard. <laughs> Oh no, no. Eva said that she can say that she's wrong. Oh, yeah. I think it's on his head, Eva. No, he's not using Joe Sonia paints. Uh, no, Harold. No. Not on this one. Oh, yeah, Eva. Thank <laughs> you. 
plate went. Right? Surprised when I looked at the clock. You're doing good, man. Well, shouldn't have said that. Um, He's going to join a funnel club. Does the balance of burr consistently change as you remove material? This one, um, it's actually, it's got a good balance of burr all the way around this. Sometimes you can get them where sort of half the piece of wood is fairly plain green and the, the other half is full of burr. This one seems to be consistent throughout with with the burr that's in there. Yeah.
and they've all I've already gone through. <laughs> I was just wondering if I was going to end up going through the side on this one, but I already have. But I'm leaving this fairly chunky. It's going to be a chunky monkey. do for that so i'll not come back to this bit okay yeah i've basically finished on this bit apart from sanding mind you seeing that i've got a, a bit of a ridge just here i'll see if i can just get that scraped off Still a wee bit there.
Who's in? Sorry, Jimmy. The blue light, the blue light minion. Oh, so he's finished work, has he? Yeah. I'll get a curve too. Scott, Scott said he's wait, uh, waiting for the uh, watching the ambulance, waiting for a breakdown truck. Can't you just take the pedals to it and just go clip? <laughs> and hope it starts. <laughs> oh, rubber, rubber double, he said that. already answered that, Steve. Was that the question about the colouring? No? Yeah. No, hang on. No, no, he's, he's got one just above. It's just gone about uh, Yorkshire Grit. Yeah. Well, Yorkshire Grit and Champ Hampshire Shane. Yeah, I thought about Yorkshire Grit and Hampshire Shane. Guess that he said, link. well, Yorkshire Grit and Hampshire Sheen sleeves. Go on. No, you go, you go on, mate.
I could try some, I, I mean, it doesn't have to be chestnut stains. I could try um, the Hampshire Sheen Intrinsic Colours to colour it. It's just that with the green on this one, Harold, I don't really want to touch it with colour. That's the reason that, um, that I'm not colouring it. I don't think it needs any colour. I think it's got more than enough going on there with um, without any colour being added. Yorkshire Grit, Harold, Yorkshire Grit would work on this. It's just that with all the um, bark inclusions and everything, I'd be spending hours trying to clean it out of the bark inclusions. How come you two are up there? You can have per per uh, position that camera any perfect, though. Um, what was I talking about? Same yeah, same. Yorkshire Grit would work. But I'd have a hell of a time cleaning it out of all the inclusions. The same as Hampshire Sheen Wax, that would work as well. But again, I'd have the same problem cleaning out of the inclusions. Which is why I've got to put oil. Take it easy, Mark. Well, that seems like a sharp tool, Wayne. It is. That, I think that's one of my next steps. He's learning to use my Pro Edge. This, in fact, I am just going to give it a, a sharp. And I'm I've, actually I've changing, I'm changing this one into a um, English grain, purely for doing the bottom of, of balls. I tell you, I've got a lot to learn, didn't I? Got to learn how to use the blooming tools first, and I've got to learn how to sharpen them with a blooming pro edge, and then, and then we've got to carry on learning to use the tools again. It's like it's like learning to walk and then having an operation on your ankle and then learning how to walk again. Yeah. Hello, Dale. Dale's back. Did you enjoy your sponge bath? to go behind my head when I'm doing a live, I think. Yeah. Going either. Your ears clean, Eva. Did you sound through the bottom, Wayne? Nope, not yet. Damn it. 
Woody's asking how much will you get for that bowl, Wayne? How much will I get for it? Well, I know how much I'm going to ask for it. <laughs> Whether I get that or not, it's a different matter. Tell me there's no F in all. Well, me, me and Dale are both super traded, so I'll take the bottom half and Dale can have the top half. <laughs> Actually, some, somebody else super chatted as well, didn't they? Well, he, anyway, regardless, I'm still having the bottom half or bottom section. You've seen uh, it too, have you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, JP. It's yours, man. It's all yours. What did I miss? Uh, Nick's, uh, Nick would need a 48-hour special to sand that bowl. And uh, Martin said, I'll settle for the rim. That's what she said. told you is that he started with 40 grit and is going up 10 at a time <laughs> yeah that's me yeah. I started off with a brick then I went on to 40 grit I put my bloody paintbrush down again I think I think uh, Dale's having a bit of fun. Uh, either I accidentally cut my arm with the scroll scroll bar, and I think you need to, scroll saw. Yeah, I think that was scroll saw, and managed to cut a trail steering pattern of a horse into it. I love his work, but I hate horses, so I had an allergic reaction. <laughs> uh, I've scrolled a horse before. A trail steering his horse. Uh, RST's in the chat. Hey, Baz. Hello, Baz. It's funny, you can see all the dust being blown right the way through. Yeah. yeah you, couldn't, you couldn't mix bread in there, could you? Do you know what I mean? Nah. No, you couldn't actually hold it on the vacuum truck to turn off the bottom either. <laughs> Hello, Barry from France. <laughs> Martin says there's five holes in that bowl. Don't want any of it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, five holes in them, and not one of them are glorious. Yeah. 
Mike says it's not a funnel, more of a colander. <laughs> brilliant. That brilliant. I wish I hadn't thought of that one. Now again, this one is just going to get a wipe over. I'm not going to spin the lid. Uh, mm -hmm. just, rip all, just rip all the paper, and it'll all get stuck in these crevices. Yeah, make sure you get real deep into them crevices. <laughs> yeah, you've got to make sure you get your crevices out properly. Oh my God, <laughs> otherwise things will go badly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right then, I'll bring my stool back. I'll change the camera. A seat bolt for someone on a diet. <laughs> Steve said, "So no fire scorching then." No, not on this piece, Steve. It's it's too nice. Really, it is. Yeah, but it'd look better with fire. It probably would, but I'm not going to do it now. <coughs> Excuse me, Kobe. Oh, my light, that's shocking. There you are, guys. Oh, Very man. nice. It's I quite heavy. It would. Yeah, it is still quite heavy because I've left it fairly thick. Um, I'll just measure it and see what sort of size it is. Um, well, it's ended up at um, a lot less than I thought. It's ended up at 12 inches by oh, five and a half. That's where it, it's ended up at. 12 inches by five and a half, burr ash. Very nice. Hmm. It's not very often you come across a nice piece of burr ash that size. So I'm, um, I'm very happy with that. Very nice. Right, I'll bring the two guys back in. So, well, that's not bad. Nearly an hour and a half. That's okay. Um, thanks for everybody for coming in. How many's in, by the way? I'm not on. 74 at present oh, time. Right. Excellent. Thanks, everybody. 75, 75 on my window. Okay. Oh. Thanks, everybody, for coming in and showing your support. It is much appreciated. Thanks to everybody who. Give me a super chat, because uh, um, me and Jimmy don't care about super chats. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> one, of the, one of these days, I'll get up to the likes of Emma or Stuart Farini. Or me. I had 630 in. Yeah, you had 630 in. Stuart had 700 and odd. I think Emma last week had 700 and odd as well. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did, did, did you notice, Wayne? I didn't turn around and ask you if I could plug my channel. Yeah, go on, plug your channel. No, no, no I didn't ask. I didn't ask. No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> GP would work. No uh, S. Hang, hang on, I, I didn't. I didn't put an S. Uh, Emma Eva is saying the goal you made for this year is make it. Have you still got it? Yes, Eva. I have. It's because it was made to make a central, so that's where it'll be going. In fact, there's a couple of them going to make a central. One of them's the fruit bowl, which um, Steve's mm -hmm. there. And the other one is the Jaffa Bowl. The Jaffa Bowl. For the Jaffa competition. I've got to think of a massive scroll saw project to do for Make a Central. I don't know what I'm going to make yet. Anyone Jax, got any suggestions? Jax is asking, is the wood pretty white? Yeah, it is, Jack. It's it's ash, so it's uh, very light anyway. There was, I've, I've actually taken it all away, but there was a lot of brown right in the centre, which is the heartwood. Uh, but I've taken all that away. There's just a very small bit right in the centre there. But yeah, it is very light. It's just darkened very slightly with having the oil on. 
but other than that, it's uh, it's very light. And I think once I put that in the shop, I don't think it'll actually last very long in the shop, to tell you the truth. I think it will just go. Mm -hmm. Right, guys, I'm going to press the button. Thanks again for coming in. Um, I will be back on Friday lunchtime, and I don't know what I'm uh, going to be doing. Um, but yes, I'll do something for an hour or so. So I'll see you all soon. Uh, thanks, guys, for being here. No, and, uh, no worries. I'm going to press the bloody button. Oh, thank you, Tommy. I just caught that one. No, right, hang on. I'll, I'll just, no, hang on, hang on. I'll explain to Tommy. Tommy, I've got a turret to go on here, but I didn't think it would be actually, um, even though I've turned this down to the, the lower speed range, so it's higher torque, I didn't want to risk it on here. And like I say, I couldn't be bothered getting set up on the, the VB, or I didn't have time to get set up on the VB. Thank you, Debbie. I will certainly do that. Right, I'm pressing the button this time, guys. Bye, all. Night-night.